Welcome back to the Bukla series. Today we will take a look at the Bukla 245, the sequential voltage source. Before I start, I'd like to, to warn you that my 245 is not standard regarding aesthetics. Uh, I built it myself using a SAM modular kit and I decided to uh, use the color chart uh, that uh, started after it was uh, released. Because uh, if you look uh, at pictures of the 245, this is not uh, this color chart that was used when it was released. Um, but for the sake of um, the usability of my instrument, I decided to use the color chart that is uh, on all the other module I have in this uh, instrument. At first sight, the 245 can be seen as a five steps, four rows step sequencer. The module is divided into two parts. On the left is the pulser section. Here are the start and stop switches. Both can be CV controlled. Above is uh, the clock control with a CV input linked to an attenuator. And then you get a pulse length control that can also be CV controlled. And finally, at the top is uh, the pulse output and a special output called ref. While uh, the pulse outputs a trigger at each step, which uh, length can be set with uh, this knob or uh, this uh, CV, ref outputs a short envelope on these steps. So uh, I can use uh, the pulse output with an envelope generator. Let's try it with uh, the 281. And I can use the ref output directly into my low pass gate by 292, like this. Useful. The second part of the module is made of four rows of five steps. Each row has two uh, identical CV output, which values are set using these knobs and you, you get uh, five pair of uh, gate output, one uh, pair per step. There are three ways to access the steps. First of all, you can use the advanced input that will access each step sequentially from left to right. It's placed um, next to the pulser gate output so that you can use a shorting bar like this to connect the two. So let's try, for example, to, to sequence um, the timber of the 259. So I will use the first row, set uh, some voltages, and I will use the pulser pulse output to trigger my envelope on the 281. I can also use the same output to control, for example, the decay time I can use the switches at the bottom to shorten the sequence. For example, I get here a four step sequence, three steps, two steps. But I can also get a three step sequence here. The second way to, to access the voltages, let's remove this one, is uh, the analog input here. With uh, the analog input, um, you will select the step based on the CV value uh, of the input. So for example, 
let's try to use an offset and you will see as I turn my offset value I get different steps. I can scroll manually and select the steps based on the CV value. The third way to access the steps is via the pulse inputs at the bottom. A gate signal will jump directly to the selected step. For example, here I'm on step 1. If I use the pulse output of 218, I instantly get to the third step here. And if I use the pulser to clock the sequencer, whenever I touch a key, I will go back to step 3. These inputs are really great in conjunction with other sequencers. I think we've covered the basic features of the 245. Now I will go through a few examples. For this first example, I will make a very, very simple patch, a simple sequence. So I'm using the pulse output to clock the 245. This pulse output will also trigger an envelope on the 281. The first row will uh, control the pitch of um, the principal oscillator of the 259. The second row will control the attack uh, of my uh, function of the 281. And uh, the third row will control the timber of the, 290, the 259. Sorry. Let's try this. And I can also use the fourth row to, mod to modulate the pulse length, for example. For this second uh, example, uh, I've kept the same patch. I just removed the shorting bar between the pulse output of the pulser and the advanced input uh, of the 249. And uh, I will clock the 266 quantized random voltages with the pulser, and I will use the random output into the analog input so that it will uh, move randomly between the steps. Let's try this. Let's go faster. And faster. I didn't mention this uh, in, in the beginning, but um, the pulsar clock can be can go very, very, very fast. I wanted to show that. For the next example, I won't use the CV output to make it more clear. We will use the, the banana ability in the Bookla world to, to combine gates and to, to, make, to, to use the banana as a or uh, logic connector to build rhythmic patterns. So for example, if I do this, I can, I can combine gate of the step 1, 3, and let's say 5, and I can combine step, let's say, 2, 4, and also 1. And 
I'm going to use this set of gates to control an envelope and this set of gates to control another envelope. So let's try this. For the next example, we will keep the same patch and now we will uh, add some groove. And uh, it's, a, it's a trick I really like to use. It's to use a row, a, a row of, uh, of CV to control internal time to get um, almost a human groove. Because it's not, time is not quantized when you do like this. And you can get some interesting groove, I think. So, to do that, I use a row to control internal time and it's, you have to, to fine-tune your, uh, your sequence to, to, to get what you like. So I will try something, let's say, like that and I will fine-tune. Hey, not bad. Just to remember. This is a straight sequence. this example I won't use the 245 as a sequencer I will use it as a, what I like to call an analog preset manager so um, I've just uh, routed uh, the first row to uh, the wave shape of oscillator 1 of the 258 the third row on uh, the wave shape of the second oscillator of the 258 each of these oscillators go through um, 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 a filter of uh, the 291 which uh, center frequency is controlled by the second and the fourth step and so I use a simple offset to use it uh, to, to, to have five different presets for uh, this um, setup so let's hear preset 1 so this is preset 1 and now I can go to preset 2 can sequence my presets. I will end with a last patch, of course uh, there are plenty of us we can uh, we can uh, imagine, but uh, I decided to to go through a few patches I like. For this patch, I will go step by step because it's a bit more complicated than the previous ones. So I'm using the pulse output to uh, clock the two forty five. I'd like to get a kind of mayhem whenever I press a key on the two eighteen. So uh, for that, I need to start. The sequencer each time I press a key, so that's quite simple. I get the pulse output of the 218 to the start input of the pulsar section, but I need to stop at the fifth step, so I get the gate output of the fifth step 
to the stop. So if I press a key, I go through the five step and stop. If I press another key, it starts again. Okay, quite simple. So now I have to decide which um, parameter I will move uh, using this. So I will use the 259, which has a lot of controllable parameter. I will do uh, quite a random patch it's just for uh, the sake of the demo. So I think that's okay if it's not the best musical patch ever. Just a way to show what kind of things we can do. Now I also need to get the pulse output of the 218 to trigger an envelope. And I will also get the key voltage output to the key voltage input of the 259. And now if I am lucky enough, it should work. I will add some decay time. Okay, so that's all for today with the 245. As always, if you have any question, request, if I forgot something, please leave a comment in the section below. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and see you next time.